Merc Guard is known as one of the elite in-game points of interest you'll come across in New World. You do have multiple options for obtaining gear at endgame, and Merc Guard is one of the best ones you'll find. What you need to understand about Merc Guard is that firstly it's considered as the home base of the Corrupted. That means that in here you'll come across some of the most dangerous members of the Corrupted family that you'll ever see. I'm talking about the Corrupted Commanders, the Corrupted Priest, and infamous Corrupted Bears, and even the Corrupted Ogres. Most, if not all, the mobs you'll find here are around level 65, and since they're corrupted, that means that they're weak to thrust damage, nature damage, and arcane. So be sure to bring some amber or sapphire gems socketed into your weapons. And the guide to Merc Guard begins even before you enter the point of interest. There are two separate entrances into this area, one on the right side and the left. Each one is guarded by a corrupted ogre that has multiple moves that can catch you off guard, like his AoE vortex that can pull you in, or his giant death ball that they might roll towards you and knock you down. It is possible to try and speed past them and jump on elevation to reset the mob aggro, but most of the time people take these head on in a party. It used to even be possible to solo them, and when we get to launch with certain builds that might still be a thing. There used to be a secret entrance into Merc Guard, but it's since been blocked off. But firstly, there's one point on each side of Merc Guard that I refer to as campfire checkpoints. You should find at least two more directly in the front of Merc Guard too, but this pole structure is normally where you'll find areas that are usually guaranteed to let you put down campfires. You can always put down a campfire anywhere outside points of interest in sanctuaries, but you'll sometimes find these inside and outside points of interest and this is where you know for a fact you can put them. If you start on the left side, an easy way to get past the ogre is to run forward and immediately take the first right. You can jump up on this platform right next to the blacksmith area, but honestly I prefer entering from the right side. You also have the arch magister on the right side that has easy access, and you can continually farm this mob for really good in-game gear. Because of the drop changes that were made during the closed beta, you do not want to take more than about 10 to 12 people in the merc guard at any given time. The reason for this is that they made it so the more people that aren't in a party, or the more parties there are than just one, the higher the chance that the unique enemy will drop less than usual or nothing at all. Luckily though, this should not count for the chest which Merc Guard is absolutely filled to the brim with. Be sure to check every corner, every building especially, everything you can. Here is where you can get a really good chest rotation, and Merc Guard has always been notoriously known as one of the best places to farm crafting and refining materials, even schematics. It may not give as much as it did before, but you can still get a lot of use out of this, and even gear if you get lucky. By the way, be sure to bring some luck items here to help your chances. Now what should you avoid? While the ogres like we talked about at the front entrances might put up a bit of a fight, there is another one on the inner part of Merc Guard heading towards the cathedral which we will talk about in a second, and if you're in the middle of a fight with other mobs, these ogres can pose a problem because of the AoE vortex and the other AoE moves that they have. So I would focus these first. Next thing is the priest. Aside from the arch magister that you can farm in here, they do have a collection of elite priests that you'll come across as well. You'll want to take these out quickly too, they can summon hounds to their side repeatedly, but more than that they can also cast radius wide AoE shockwaves that can do a lot of damage if your teammates are close. Plus they like to repeatedly spawn corrupted mines that can really mess people up if you're not paying attention. But by far the worst ones in Merc Guard, ones that should always be handled with care or actively avoided, are the Corrupted Bears and the Corrupted Commanders. And actually, I'm going to say the Commanders even more so than the Bears. The Bears don't do anything too much more than a regular one would, they're just freakishly big, they pack a hell of a punch, but they can be tanked in a corner well enough to where you probably don't have to worry about it that much. The Commanders on the other hand, they are now widely known for being extremely powerful and incredibly unpredictable. Part of the problem with only trying to bring one party into Merc Guard so you can get the full benefits is that you cannot easily defeat these corrupted commanders with just one party. Not to mention that the corrupted breaches scattered around Merc Guard spawn multiples of the elites, such as the bears, the priests, the regular corrupted elites you'd find at different breaches, and the commanders on top of that. There used to be objectives in the Path to Merc Guard Arena questline that would lead you to the Corrupted Spriggan Arena. This was located at the very top of Merc Guard at the Cathedral, and Commander Thorpe who we initially traveled with to the island has always sat inside. This area however has been blocked off for a while and not only is Captain Thorpe no longer reachable, the items needed for the questline no longer obtainable from the portals, and the arena is no longer there, but also, if you were to glitch past this area, you will see that they are in fact developing an expedition to go down into the lower levels. Now if you haven't seen my video about a peek into the future of New World, there's more context to this, but this expedition is the one that I believe will be later called Isabella's Lair. So we'll have to wait for that to come back, but you can at least still do the portals for the caches if you want to. But if you only have one to two parties, it might not even be worth it. I'd suggest sticking with the portals outside of Merc Guard just to make it easier. 
but back to the commanders. So these bastards love to do these random flame dash moves that tend to kill almost anybody that gets caught in their path. They're not as easy to tank because of this. Even if you hold aggro, they tend to do this from time to time. They also have multiple area of effect moves including their ground slam that can pretty much one shot you, their spinning move that Captain Thorpe tends to do when you fight him as well, and their AoE frontal greatsword attacks. So honestly if you don't absolutely need to, you'll be better off just running from or avoiding these commanders altogether. Keep in mind that no matter which side you choose to enter Merc Guard from, you'll cross paths with one of these commanders halfway through. But the right side of Merc Guard is easier to deal with because you have multiple places near the commander where you can climb up and reset aggro. Highly recommend doing this to prevent your entire party wiping. But yeah, past that, the only other major thing you need to farm in Merc Guard is the Arch Magister on the right side. Before you even get to the Magister, you will have a corrupted breach that you'll have to deal with. And yes, it's one of the annoying ones. However, there is a campfire checkpoint just on the staircase up to the boss, and also there is in fact a way to skip past this breach if you really want to. Firstly though, if you plan on taking it, make sure you have at least tier 4 or tier 5 corrupted tinctures, or you buy the elixirs from the faction vendor which I would say is probably the easier way to go. Before you even step into Merc Guard, you should ensure that everybody has at least 10 tinctures, a few honing stones, and potentially some corrupted coatings, but especially food buffs and potions, because otherwise, this will not be an easy area to farm. If you choose to go on the side to skip this breach, keep in mind that you will have limited options for falling back. All you have to do is run past the breach, scale onto the side of the mountain, and go slightly around until you can climb back up and find yourself on the other side. One thing to note is that Amazon is notorious for blocking off secret pathways and entrances, so I would not be surprised if this area is inaccessible come launch, but it's worth checking either way. Once you get there, you're not out of the woods yet. You'll have a collection of wonderful corrupted priests to deal with, and also the bodyguards of the Arch Magister as well. If you take down the Corrupted Breach, you'll see a couple big rocks that you can pull these mobs back to and take them out as a pair or one at a time. Alternatively, you can run past them and also jump on the safe spot if you make it. Whatever you decide to do, get to the Arch Magister and you'll be scot-free. You can fight them over here continuously, but I would make sure that nobody dies because the priests will respawn rather quickly and that will become a problem. The Arch Magister, I believe, should respawn anywhere from like 7 to 13 minutes. I don't remember exactly, but it's not that long. Just like in other areas, you'll want to keep farming this elite for gear and resources until your party is completely satisfied. And also don't forget to loot the chest right behind him when you're done with the fight. Periodically Amazon has changed up the gear score of items you can obtain from places like this, but you can at least be sure that you'll get above 500 plus gear score items, or higher depending on your watermark. That's pretty much everything you need to know about Merc Guard, and I hope this helps a bit when the game goes live. Have a wonderful night or day folks, and farewell.